What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got some new Grand Star Alliance cars to talk about. That being one of the two new houses in Keyforge in Worlds Collide. And first of all, they're looking pretty tasty. Second of all, we've got a key cheating card here, which is looking like really ridiculously good. Let's start with that one, shall we? So what we have here is Forging an Alliance. It gives you an Amber bonus. It's an action card. And it reads, Forge a key at plus seven current cost, reduced by one to a maximum of six, for each play represented among cards in play. Cool. It literally just lets you forge a key out of turn. Now, one of the things we saw with one of the... Well, Nightforge, right? It was one of the new key cheating cards in Age of Ascension. And it was very interesting in that it said, if you haven't forged a key this turn, you may forge a key at plus four current cost. That's not part of the deal here. Now, you are at plus seven current cost, but if there are four houses out, then you're forging at plus three current cost. And you can do it if you've already forged a key this turn, which means that you could potentially reuse this using something like Nepenthe Seed. So you can literally use this to forge a key. Oh, I've got Nepenthe Seed. Let's just use it straight away again. Forge two keys in one turn. Or you can forge a key at the beginning of your turn and then use forging an alliance to forge a key during your turn. Which seems to suggest to me that the card designers here don't seem to think that you're going to be able to do it that much. Like I've said, Night Forge was deliberately nerfed. And it had to be if you've not forged a key this turn. And that basically let you forge a key at... 10. Now when it says plus 4 current cost, generally it's going to be 10, but if your opponent's got say a grabber jammer down, then it would be 11, 6 plus the 4 plus grabber jammer, or if there was a jammer pack down, then it would be 2 more, etc. Cool. So the real question here is how easy is it going to be to lower the cost of this key? Because you can be forging a key here at basically 7 plus 1. Normal six, seven. But there's got to be six houses represented among cards in play. And the language here is very important. It says cards in play. That is creatures, artifacts, and upgrades. No action cards don't count. They're in the discard. They're not in play. So a lot depends on this. If you're using the same three houses as your opponent, then you can only possibly have three different houses represented in play. But that still turns it into a Night Forge. Except you can do it if you've already forged a key this turn, which makes it objectively better. But maybe there'll be four, five, or even six houses between the two of you. But you need to have them all in play. That is, creatures, artifacts, upgrades. What you really need to do with a card like this is play a few games with your deck and see how often you can get all three of your houses out. Then you need to go and analyze the results of whatever Volt Tours happen around the release of Worlds Collide and see the general mix of houses that we see. And that will give you a rough idea of how good this card is. The funny thing about this is that how good this card is will change constantly. If we end up in a format where everyone is playing Star Alliance Shadows Dis and they're the only three houses you see, this becomes way worse. Whereas if we're in a format where all six houses, or maybe even more, because bearing in mind we're now going to have nine houses amongst the set. Now, in a sealed event, there's still only going to be six possible houses, but in an Archon event where you can bring whichever deck you like, there are going to be up to nine houses being played around the event. So that's going to be better. I mean, this card is literally better in Archon than it is in sealed, because there are nine houses that could be there rather than six. Similarly, a format with lots of artifacts on the field makes this card better. Lots of artifact hate and it gets worse. A format with large battle lines, this gets better. Lots of board wiping so there's no creatures out, this gets worse. The more cards are on the field and the more different houses are being played, the better this gets. 
and the inverse, the worse it gets. But the fact of the matter is, we've still got a new key cheating card that is just reliant on how much amber you've got and could allow you to forge as cheaply as a key charge. Which then does bring me to my next point. Key, key charge is still better, frankly. Most of the time. Key charge makes you lose an amber and then forge a key at current cost. So you're basically forging a key for seven. At its best, forging an alliance will let you forge a key at seven. Except it gives you an amber when you play it. So actually, if there are six different houses out, you basically just forge a key at cost. At its best, this is the best key cheating card we've got. Because key charge is the best at the moment, and if there are six different houses out, this is better. The thing is, it's unreliable, and it's not always at its best. It is a phenomenal key cheating card, but there are lots of factors, and this will literally be better or worse, depending on the deck you're playing against. I still expect it to be played a lot. We've seen a lot of key charging decks, a lot of them working. I expect to see the same with forging an alliance. So let's have a little bit of a look at Quad Recorder. Quad Recorder is an upgrade that reads, your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each house represented among friendly creatures to a maximum of three. So once again, and we've seen this a few times with the Star Alliance so far, cards that are better the more unique houses are on the board, though this one is a one-sided, i.e. it only depends on the cards that you've got, the houses represented for you, and even narrower than that, it's just your creatures. So in that regard, it kind of reminds me of Proclamation 346E, that being a card which increases the cost of your opponent forging by two, unless they've got three different houses out. Here, if you've got three different houses out, good news! Your opponent's keys cost plus three. I don't like this as much as Jammer Pack. This, as far as I'm concerned, is a weaker version of Jammer Pack. Firstly, Jammer Pack gives you an amber. Secondly, it is a flat your opponent's keys cost plus two. And if you're playing against a person with board wiping, let's say a couple of unlocked gateway or whatever, then all of a sudden, your opponent's keys are costing plus zero. I would rather have Jammer Pack. It's still good, and let's face it, Jammer Pack isn't an option. You know, Mars isn't even in Worlds Collide. It's been taken out, Boo Hiss, etc. It's better than anything else we've seen for the Grand Star Alliance, but this is a weaker version of Jammer Pack. At its best, it is... Well, you don't get the amber, but your opponent's keys cost plus one more. I mean, increasing the cost of forging is great. Either it stops your opponent forging, or your opponent still forges, but they've got to pay extra amber to do so, which may stop them forging next time. You know, they've paid an extra two amber, and then they pass the turn with four amber. Well, if they hadn't paid the extra two, they'd have six, and they'd be forging next turn. But I don't think this is as good as Jammer Pack. Though to be clear, it is a very good card. Also, shout out here to Sensor Chief Garcia, who when you play Fight or Reap, your opponent's keys cost plus two during their next turn. That's going to be a very nice combo with this upgrade. And finally today, I want to have a quick shout about Nurse Soto. I do not think this is as exciting as the other two cards, which is why we're popping it on the end. Free power creature, no armor, no elusive or any of that, so not going to stay around for very long. But it does have that keyword that was introduced in Age of Ascension, Deploy. It can be put anywhere in your battle line. Incidentally, the first card we've looked at from Worlds Collide that has one of those new keyword skills, Omega, Alpha, Deploy. And when you play it, and when you fight, and when you reap, you heal free damage from each of Nurse Soto's neighbours. So all you really want to do is get yourself a really good fighter here, and just pop it down next to Nurse Soto, and then Nurse Soto, you're rarely going to be fighting with it, I'll be honest. Unless you really need to take something down like an Ember Imp, generally speaking, you're going to be using this for reaping. And then when you reap, you just heal free from each of your neighbours. Maybe get a lollop the Titanic down next to it. Got 11 power. 
So you're going to be able to survive a few fights. And then Nurse Soto starts healing. If you can get two Nurse Soto down, one either side of something like Lollop the Titanic. Oh my goodness, things are going to get fun. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the new cards we've got from the Grand Star Alliance. I believe I've looked at all the Grand Star Alliance cards that we've been shown so far. But as always, if you think I've missed one, let me know in the comments section. I'll get to it soon. There are a bunch of other cards that have been revealed. I promise you I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. For now, I would love to know what you think about these. So let me know in the comments section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about a whole bunch of games like Keyforge and anything else that takes my fancy. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays. <laughs>